before I was used to uh, share many things on Facebook and uh, they deactivate uh, my 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 uh, account. So my account is deactivated. I can have another one. Yeah. So in Second Chronicles chapter twenty-seven. Um, my key text here is found in Second Chronicles uh, 27 verse 6. Yeah, please turn on your Bible, on your Bibles, electronic or your physical Bible. Uh, it's in Second Chronicles 27 verse 6. And since we are promoting the Bible, uh, you know, it's hard for me to carry because this, I think, will uh, give me almost two kilos. When I travel, but every time I travel, I bring this. So when I travel to USA, United States of America, to uh, Bangladesh, and anywhere in this territory, I sit with that I bring my Bible and my devotional. Uh, this is my second uh, a journal already, second, and uh, the, the first one I already you know uh, filed it at home. So I have at least uh, a record of who God is in this chapter. So this uh, the, a journal, Bible study journal, has several questions like who is God in this chapter, well, my Bible chapter for today, date, my Bible chapter for today, my key verse in this chapter, who is God in this chapter? And this question is really something when you focus on who God is every time you read the Bible, you will have the right perspective, right? Sometimes you, you can see many things in the Bible, but if you focus on who God is, or who is God in this chapter, you'll be able to always look uh, look forward to each chapter and who God is in that chapter. So I would recommend uh, to our SYL leaders to be uh, an example of our young people of reading the physical Bible, although it's okay to have Bibles on your cell phone, but sometimes it distracts us, right? <laughs> there is messages on Facebook, and it's good to have uh, a physical Bible with us. So, uh, the text is found in verse 6. Let's pray. And then, Father, as we read your word, may your guidance be with us. Forgive us, O Lord, for our sins, and bless us by the blood, and uh, O Lord, may your Holy Spirit uh, be with us. In our midst, so we'll be able to experience you. Jesus' name. Amen. So, according to uh, Second Corinthians, verse 27, verse 6, so Jotham <coughs> became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord is God. And in verse 2 of the same chapter, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Uzziah had done, although he did not enter the temple of the Lord, but still the people acted corruptly. Uh, so he did what was right in the Lord. And Jotham prepared his ways before the Lord. And as a result, uh, he became my because he prepared his ways before the Lord said. And in the previous chapter, you will see that Uzziah also became powerful and he defeated many, many countries, nations, uh, because the Lord was with him. However, in verse, in verse 16, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. So uh, Uzziah, the father of John, was successful when he remained in the Lord. However, when he lifted his heart, uh, when he and when when he was strong, uh, but when he, he was strong in his heart, uh, his heart was lifted up. So he uh, his heart was lifted up, meaning he was you know proud of himself and according to the Bible, this works to his destruction. So, who is God in this chapter? God prospers 
and gives victory to those who prepare their ways before God. Amen? Amen. God prospers and gives victory to those who prepare their ways before God. What can I learn from this chapter? Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord. And how do I apply my learnings to my life today? Dedicate my ways before the Lord and abide in Him. Prayer requests, obey, help me, Lord, to obey your ways. Oh, Lord God, thank you for your ways are the ways of success and greatness. So simple, but this day you will be reminded of who God is. And I have already a record from uh, Isaiah chapter 11 to, because I started there. If you haven't started following the Revival and Reformation Bible reading, start it to, tomorrow. What will be this, the chapter? Second Chronicles 28. So start there. And then as you continue, you will again, you will, uh, your last chapter should be uh, Second Chronicles chapter 27. Sometimes what we do is to start in Genesis and when we totally because we are experienced to read and we stop. Right? Uh, what we can do is to stop. I started with Isaiah chapter 11 and continuing up to Revelation and then Genesis and now I am in Second Chronicles chapter 27. So read the Bible, pray every day and you will grow, grow, grow. Yeah. And many times God will speak to you in circumstances that you are in. And I have, uh, I, I've been hearing the, uh, the, the word of the Lord through His word, you know, through His word, uh, talking to me in many situations that I experience. Uh, and I have so many things to say, uh, to tell you, but uh, we have several lectures and we are still in chapter, in verse 8, the first lecture. So before we proceed to the lecture, let's pray. Heavenly Heavenly Father, may you help us, O oh Lord, to prepare our ways before you. Because your ways are the ways of victories. Your ways are the ways of success. And every time that we follow our own ways, we are defeated. We are, uh, we experience failure. Help us, O oh Lord, to abide in you, to focus our eyes on you, so we can always be connected to you and be uh, and have a saving influence on those people around us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we have there uh, chapter lesson one, seminar one. Understanding the history, philosophy, vision, objectives, and structure of Adventist Jewish ministry. So, in this uh, presentation, we'll be discussing this uh, organizational structure of Adventist Church, history of Adventist Youth Ministries, and, and some history that will help us to reflect on. Uh, we go along. Names, name changes of the department, philosophy, and mission, 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 objectives, and so on. And we'll uh, proceed as we go along. So we have here, uh, it's also, I know this is familiar or, uh, already uh, to you, but to some young people, especially those who are newly baptized, this is new, right? Uh, especially here in SPU, since you are baptizing so many people. Yeah. So, uh, we start with the local church. And then after the local church is, in your, in your uh, case, Sabuanga, Peninsula, Mission, and then you have SPUC, and then SSD, and then General Catholic. So uh, we need to uh, uh, to see in a simple way how the church is structured 
and we have seen uh, we can see it here uh, in a simple way how we are structured. And the first youth organization in the local church began in 1879. Okay, when? 1879, and it was started by Harry Fred Fenner and Luther Warren, 16 and 14 years old. This is a review to those who are master guides. Uh, so, this was the first youth organization, and I'm so happy that there are three main objectives in organizing this youth church or Adventist youth uh, to promote missionary uh, missionary uh, or to promote mission uh, and to um, like to fund missionary uh, or mission activities and also to promote um, what you call temperance movement. What is temperance movement? We are known to be people who don't smoke, who don't drink alcohol, you know, and uh, who don't use drugs. So we are sad free, smoke, alcohol, drugs free. Uh, do we have the health director here with us? So, uh, the first organization is really, um, the foundation is mission. Uh, sometimes, uh, the foundation of our, uh, what we do in our young people, let me, let me uh, emphasize this. We are not called to entertain the youth, but to lead them. Okay? Again, we are not called to entertain the youth, but to lead them. We are not entertainers. Yeah? This, uh, dear SYL, or senior youth leaders, you are not called to entertain the youth, but to disciple them, to lead them. And uh, that was the uh, first youth organization. In 1901, the General Conference officially voted into existence the Young People's Organization under the Sabbath School Department. We have the Sabbath School. Uh, yeah, yesterday we had the chief PhD with us, so that's why he's the Sabbath School, right? Uh, before 1901, AYM or Adventist Youth is under the Sabbath School Department. In 1907, the General Conference Council approved the formation of the youth of a youth department with the General Conference where Elder Kerr was elected the first GC Youth Director. So who is the first GC Youth Director? Elder Kerr. M.P. Kerr. 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 Or Kerr. So Kerr was the first general conference youth director. And they approved the youth department in 1907. And then in 1907, they agreed that Now we call it Adventist Youth Ministries, but before it was called Seventh Day Adventist Young People's Department of Missionary Politics. Huh? How would you like it? Seventh Day Adventist Young People's Department of Missionary Politics. A Department of Missionary Politics. I think it was good, right? The concept. Uh, we have young people who are uh, missionary volunteers. So that was the first name of this department. So long, but I like uh, the idea. Uh, we'll skip this. In 1950, Jell <coughs> Catwest adopted the Pathfinder Club organization. Okay? So the Pathfinder was accepted in 19. Yeah, uh, 
you are mastered, you can ask when was the, uh, the Pilot Club organization adopted by the GC. It was in 1950. Boys of Youth was in 1947. It was introduced to church, the church. And then 1922, uh, General Conference Session introduced the work of the Junior Missionary Volunteer Society, the progressive work. We have the progressive work, uh, pro progressive classwork for the master guys. Right? What are those progressive classwork? Friend. Yeah, you have friend. Friend. Yeah. So before, only three, yeah? Only three classes, friend, companion, and comrade, or master guides for junior youth and one class for senior youth and adults. And then 1928, MV Honors, Missionary Volunteer, uh, Volunteers Honors, and the Master Guide Comrade class developed for senior youth uh, and adults who decide to prepare for junior leadership. And the first Master Guide was invested in 1931. So we have this development of the Adventist Youth uh, Ministries. Uh, here are the changes. What, uh, what, is the, what was the first name? Seventh Day Adventist Youth Department of uh, Missionary Volunteers. Now we have it was changed to Youth Department of Missionary Volunteers. I still like it because of the missionary uh, thing there, the word. And in, the, in 1978, the department name changed to what? Adventist Youth. No more missionary. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope that during that time, the missionary spirit of the young people are still there. But they remove the missionary volunteers. I like, you know, those, those words, uh, missionary volunteers. Adventist youth now, Adventist Yeah. And in 2005, the General Conference Session voted the name Youth Ministries Department, which encompassed all the three age levels of uh, youth groups, adventure, blog, the finder blog, and senior youth society. And in 2015, and until now, what is the name of our Adventist Youth, uh, youth Adventist Department? Youth Department. Adventist Youth Ministries. Yeah. What can we learn? You know, what is your you know reflection on this? Anything, anyone? Yeah. So we can see that the DNA, the foundation of youth ministry is mission. And even the name during that time uh, carried that, that emphasis in mission, missionary volunteers, missionary volunteers. But it was changed to Adventist Youth and then Adventist Youth Ministries. And I hope that you, uh, we as senior youth leaders will emphasize to them that they are missionaries in the local churches. Huh? Uh, uh, and, uh, and I, in essence, I'd like AYM also to stand for Adventist Youth Mission. That we are on a mission uh, to fulfill the gospel commission of God. Yeah, mission and vision. Can we read this all together? To lead young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and to help them embrace His call of discipleship. So to lead young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So lead young people to a saving relationship with Jesus and to help them embrace his call to disciples. Yeah, so we need to disciple them and to help them um, uh, embrace his call to disciples. So the mission of Adventist Ministries is basically one of salvation, 
discipleship and service. Okay? We need to lead our young people to a saving relationship with whom? With Jesus. We need to disciple them and to lead them to, to train them for service. And this is found in, of course, in Acts 2, 42 to 47. And it is biblical ministry when the AYM pledge is carried out by the youth to the youth, for the youth, with the youth. So now we are uh, SYL leaders. Our work is to work with the youth. And later on, the young people will serve by themselves and also serve their fellow young people. So it's like uh, uh, discipling. 